Hi, I'm Dave. Welcome to Just The Watch, where I am trying to build the ultimate watch collection one affordable watch at a time. Um, I want to start today's episode by playing a little bit of a game. So I'm going to give you six features that you might find on a watch. If you have a watch in your collection that has one of these features, give yourself one point. Um, it doesn't have to all be on the same watch because that would be crazy. But yeah, just kind of keep track. Let me know in the comments how many points you got and we'll kind of play a game with this. Okay, so here's the six features. Number one, a cushion case. Number two, a sandwich dial. Number two, a textured dial. Number three, mecha quartz. Sorry, that's number four, mecha quartz. Uh, number five, a big date complication. And finally, screw down chronograph pushers. So not just a screw down crown, but screw down pushers as well. Let me know down below how many points you got. Um, because today's watch, we're taking a look at the Spinnaker Hole Chronograph. is a watch that packs all of that into one package and it does so managing to come out looking really cool and classy. So I mean, I, I would typically think that if you cram this much stuff into one watch, it might look a little bit awkward, but they've done a great job of pulling it all together. And you know, the, the Spinnaker hole I think is becoming one of my favorite designs from Spinnaker. Um, there are some negatives to this watch, and in particular there were three fairly significant quality control issues I had on it. So this is unusual from Spinnaker. I've never had that before, but we'll talk about that and all of the good parts of this watch as well when we get into the review. But let's take a look at the watch first. Okay, so as mentioned before, the Spinnaker Hole is um, yeah, a really great looking watch from Spinnaker. This is kind of their Panerai homage, and I really feel like the, they've done a great job with the designs of the Spinnaker as they've sort of evolved it and developed it uh, over time. You know, the, I just re reviewed uh, the Spinnaker Hole California uh, dial tactical edition about a month ago, and I called it Spinnaker's coolest watch. I think it's one of the coolest watches that I've seen from them. Um, just, again, really cool design. Not necessarily the best watch, but definitely for, as far as character goes um, and looks and styling, uh, just a really cool watch. Um, this one I think kind of follows along with that where you've got so much going on and yet they pull it together in a really classy, appealing uh, dial layout, great uh, case design, uh, crystal, everything just looks great on the watch. So it's a great looking watch. It's also a pretty affordable watch. This one you can get for $235. Um, if you use the discount code, uh, that I've got down below, you can get it down to $188. Um, and then full disclosure, this is a watch as usual that Spinnaker has sent me for free to review. I get to keep the watch. Also, if you do use that discount code, I will get a small commission uh, on the watch. So keep all that in mind as I go through the review. I will be giving you my honest opinion of the watch and we will be talking about some of the negatives of this watch as we get into it. Let's start as always with the dimensions and specifications of this watch so you can know what you're getting into with this. Um, you're getting a 42 millimeter case. Uh, diameter or width. It's kind of a cushion case, so it's a little bit different than a typical round case as far as measuring diameter, but comes across fairly conservatively there. 22 millimeter lugs for your strap. Uh, 47 millimeter, millimeter lug to lug, which is really compact and has really short lugs, so it wears pretty well on a wide range of wrists. Um, you are getting a 15 millimeter height, so fairly chunky watch, 100 meters of water resistance, and a Seiko Mecha Quartz movement. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and start by talking about that Seiko Mecha Quartz movement because this is my first experience with it. Um, so Seiko Mecha Quartz, is it, is it quartz or is it mechanical? Um, it's actually both. So a Mecha Quartz movement, what you have is you have a quartz powered watch. The, the heart of the watch is a battery. The timekeeping functions is, you know, gets the quartz accuracy. Um, it's powered by a motor that moves the hands. Uh, but in this case, uh, for the chronograph part of the watch. It has a chronograph mechanic, mechanical chronograph module attached to that quartz movement. So once you activate the chronograph, um, it's, the chronograph is still being powered by the battery, but all of the timekeeping and the starting and stopping is all handled by gears and levers like you would find in a, in a typical traditional mechanical chronograph. So you really are getting kind of a marriage of uh, you know, electronic quartz technology and the old school mechanical technology. As soon as you activate that mechanical chronograph movement, you can feel it, you can see it, you're getting a smooth sweep on the chronograph, you're getting a very tactile uh, push on the pushers, which is great because that allows you to know exactly when you've activated or stopped uh, the chronograph without having to look at it. 
And then when you reset it, you get this really cool instant flyback, which is um, really uh, a fun feature. And Spinnaker, they've done a great job in this. They've also included screw down pushers, which is something that I've never seen at a watch in this price range. Um, it's really fun to have a, a to, to kind of play with, and it sort of makes this watch like a really fun fidget toy almost. If you like to fidget with your watches, um, this has a lot of things you can uh, screw down and unscrew the chronograph pushers. You can feel that tactile click of the uh, movement when you activate it. You see this instant snap back on the uh, chronograph hands when you reset it. So it's a really fun watch just to play around with if you get bored and you don't have your smartphone out or some reason. I, I, I guess you could call that a positive. Um, I, I had a lot of fun with that aspect of the watch. So the Mecha Quartz, you're kind of in some ways getting the best of both worlds, right? You're getting the accuracy of a Quartz, but the character of a mechanical movement, but you're also bringing in some of the negatives of a mechanical movement. And that kind of brings up um, the first uh, kind of quality control issue that I got on mine. And this one I don't think is necessarily Spinnaker's fault. I think this is just a consequence of that mechanical chronograph uh, module in the Mecha Quartz movement. And that is that the one that I got, the chronograph hands were just slightly misaligned. And typically that's not a problem. On, on, on normal Quartz chronographs, you can adjust that by pushing the buttons in a certain way. And if you look in the manual, it'll tell you how to calibrate the hands to reset them exactly back to zero so they're hitting the markers exactly. Um, in my case, the chronograph seconds hand is off by maybe like a fifth of a second. And the minute chronograph minutes hand is off by maybe about 30 seconds. Um, but because it's a mechanical uh, chronograph module, because it's Mecha Quartz, you can't adjust that by hand. You can't do it yourself. You basically would have to take it into a watchmaker to adjust it. And chronograph movements, in my experience, have a tendency to get misaligned like that. So that's why it's so nice to be able to calibrate it just yourself by pushing buttons on the watch. If you can't do that all of a sudden, even if you did get the watch with perfectly aligned hands at first, there is a chance that you might bump it or knock it as time goes by that will cause the hands to get slightly misaligned. Um, and you won't be able to fix that without taking it into a shop. So keep that in mind if you're looking into a Mecha Quartz or particularly this one, that that would be maybe one of the trade-offs you'd have to be aware of. Um, that said, it is an extremely cool movement where again, you're getting that kind of combination of a little bit of mechanical um, magic, but you're getting it at a much lower price. Typically, you would never find a mechanical chronograph in this like sub $500 price range. There are a few exceptions. There's a couple of, you know, two to $300 chronographs that are using a Siegel chronograph movement. That's a topic for a, another video. Okay, let's move on and talk a little bit about the dial on this watch. And this is one of the, uh, the best uh, features of this watch, I think. Um, it's a really interesting dial. So you're getting, a, a, first of all, it's a sandwich dial. So you're getting two layers. There's uh, the top layer that has this kind of um, gravelly texture that's been sort of with a glossy finish to it. And then they've colored it with this sort of fume, fumier, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the, the, the fume texture or the color on it, um, it starts out a light color in the middle and then it gets darker towards the edges. So mine's the green one, which is a really pleasant green. I think it really matches uh, with the loom. It kind of reminds me of a, like a, a Sprite can colored uh, dial a lot in a lot of lightings. And I really like the dial. It looks great. Um, the texture is great. The finish is great. Um, really nice to look at in various lighting situations, really interesting, and so much going on on this dial. Again, you've got at 12 o'clock a big date complication, 3 o'clock you've got a 24-hour sub-dial, 6 o'clock you've got a running, uh, running second hands, and at 9 o'clock you've got the chronograph minute hands, you've got the applied spinnaker logo kind of in the middle too. Um, so this is a six-hand chronograph. Uh, and, and they've loomed up everything on it, and the loom is great. We'll get to the loom shot in just a second here. Um, but the dial, I think, is really well done. They've crammed a lot on there, but it looks great. Th but that does bring us to another one of the negatives. Um, one of the quality control issues that I got is on my uh, review unit that I got in, uh, there was a little fleck of dust that almost looks like maybe it was like a, a something like maybe fell off of the dial finish, a little black fleck of dust inside one of the, the loom uh, plots. And then I noticed under, stuck to the underside of the crystal as well, there were two or three other small flecks that were much harder to see those, um, but the one that fell into the loom plot is, is really easy to see. Um, so they didn't do a great job of cleaning out the inside of the, the dial and the inside of the case before sealing it up, uh, which is definitely a negative. Again, this is unusual. This is the first time I've had any quality control issue uh, from Spinnaker, but it's something to keep in mind there. The big date complication is really cool. This is the first time I've had that particular complication on a watch and I actually really like it. It's much easier to read than a typical date. Um, you basically got two date wheels and two date windows so that, you know, so if it's, uh, you know, if you're looking at like the, the 15th of the month, the one and the five are basically two different date wheels. So it allows them to put big numbers in each of those. 
and and it makes it much easier to read. I think it's much easier to read than like a, a, a Cyclops where you have a, a magnification on the crystal. It looks cooler. Um, so really great feature there. The only negative is, is because they have so much on there and because of the positioning of it, um, they put a lollipop on the chronograph second hand that's parked over the 12 o'clock and that lollipop partially covers up the bottom of the date. Um, usually it doesn't really cause any problem of reading it, but it does get in the way a little bit. So like if the point of a big date complication is to make it easier to read the date, but then because you have so much crammed in there, you've kind of got a little bit of one of the hands blocking it, kind of defeats the purpose a bit. Um, it's more of an annoyance than anything, but that was one thing that I noticed that kind of bugged me a little bit. All right, let's check out the loom. And this is, I, again, I think maybe another one of the standout features of this. I think this is the best loom of any watch from Spinnaker that I've seen. It's extremely bright. It glows for a long time and they have it all over the place. You have all of the hour markers are loomed, all of the subdials are loomed, all of the hands on the watch are loomed. Um, you can actually use the chronograph in the dark and be able to roughly tell how much time has elapsed um, in the dark just by looking at the loom portions of it. And so because of that, it just is a really interesting look in the dark. The case of the watch is uh, mostly polished. You're getting a little bit of brushing on the lugs. Um, again, it's this interesting cushion case that wears really nicely. You know, I think even if you have a smaller wrist, it will, will wear, wear pretty well. And they're relatively compact lug to lug. Again, the, the one uh, drawback is the height, um, but I, I don't really think that turns out to be a problem. I think that's more of a design choice at this point. They could have made it slimmer if they wanted to, but they chose to make it a thick watch to give it more wrist presence. And I think it works. I think it looks really good. I, I really enjoyed wearing it in kind of casual situations. Um, it just looks great. And I think the, the construction of the dial is really well done as, as well. It's the, the case is kind of a, a lot more rounded. Um, then you've got the bezel uh, that they've put tachometer markings on that really looks great. And then rising out of that tachometer bezel, um, you've got this kind of bulbous, uh, high domed mineral crystal. So again, this is a AR coated, sapphire coated mineral crystal. A full sapphire crystal would have been better, um, but this crystal really looks good. I really like the way it looks. I like the way it rises up out of the case. I like this kind of really bubbly kind of look to it. It looks like a, a soap bubble at some angles because of the AR, AR coating. Um, so it's a really cool look. I, I really appreciate it. But yeah, really good kind of nautical feel to it uh, of the crystal. And that's another thing that I, I really like the way the crystal looks. I just wish it was full on sapphire. But at this price range, that's about what you would expect. Finally, let's take a look at the strap. And I think, as usual, um, Spinnaker has done a really great job uh, at their straps. I think their stock straps, especially for watches in this price range, are, are a step above almost any other brand out there as far as stock straps go. Um, this is a very thick, um, waterproof leather. I've tested these uh, wa the water resistance on these uh, leather straps before. They seem to hold up pretty well. My typical recommendation is um, they're fine for occasional swimming. If you have the watch on and occasion to swim, go ahead and jump in with the watch, just dry it out afterwards and you should be fine. If you're gonna be swimming with this watch on a regular basis, I would definitely recommend putting it on a rubber strap or a NATO strap or something that is you know, a lot more water resistance. The main problem seems to be um, that after you soak the leather, it takes like 24 hours to dry. So it's not very fun to wear a, a sopping wet leather strap on your wrist for that long. Uh, and it looks great. It's a great looking strap. The color goes wonderfully with the dial and with the watch. Um, they did a great job there. You've got kind of this you know, very nice vintage look, good stitching all around as far as the looks go, but that leads to the final quality control issue, and that is that the stitching on this one is coming undone. So the, one of the accent stitching uh, on, the, on the band near where it attaches to the buckle is coming out, and I'm probably gonna have to try and glue it a little bit to get it to stay in place, but I could basically just pull that string completely out. The string is decorative, um, so the strap's not necessarily going to fall apart, but that is, again, kind of disappointing to see these quality control issues on there. And again, that's something that is unusual. I, I haven't seen that on any of the other Spinnaker watches that I've reviewed before. So all that said, what do I think about this watch? Um, I, from a design standpoint and from a style standpoint, I really like it. Um, I, I've really enjoyed wearing it. Uh, it does have some useful functions. The chronograph is very useful to have a chronograph. Uh, and overall, it's just a really fun watch to have. Um, again, there are those drawbacks that I mentioned before. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of a tough one. It really depends on how much you like the style and uh, yeah, yeah, and if you're willing to make those trade-offs with uh, the, you know, having a mineral crystal. And yeah, I, again, I think the, the biggest drawbacks were those quality control issues, which probably aren't gonna be a problem for other people. Um, but again, there's something that kind of you know, makes you a little bit might cause some hesitations in the back of your mind about ordering it. Um, but overall, really great price. To be able to get uh, a Seiko Mecha Quartz chronograph with 100 meters of water resistance, screw down crown and pushers uh, for under $200, I think that's a great deal. And I, this looks like a pretty solid uh, chronograph offering. I mean, again, typically if you're looking at sub $200 
uh, Mecha Quartz chronographs, you're probably gonna have a lot more trade-offs than you have on this one. And this one has a really unique look to boot. There's, again, there's, there's not many watches that you can find that have one or two of these features on this, but this one has like six or seven really unique features all packed into one watch. So it gives it a ton of character, something really unique, and again, a design that I, I really appreciate the design, I really enjoy wearing it, and it's just, yeah, it's just a, a real fun watch to wear around. So I hope that helps you guys out. That kind of wraps up my thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, as always, love hearing from you, and again, if you are interested in this watch, make sure you use the discount code below, get yourself 20% off. Um, there are a couple of other colors that you can look at as well. I really like this green one, uh, but the blue one looks cool. Um, but yeah, check those out. Links to everything below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you later and see you again next time.